Ooh, that is good. One thing I like just as much as photography, coffee. What's up guys, Jay Yudlowski, Focus Photography and Design, helping you focus on your photography. Today, I wanted to talk about f-stops and aperture. What are they? How do you use them? And what do they do? So let's get into it. One of the first questions I get from a lot of people who are just getting into photography or get a new camera is, how do I get those blurry backgrounds? How do I get that nice uh, out of focus area in the background? I really like that. What is that? And how do I get it? How do I make that image? So the way you're going to do that is by using your aperture and f-stops. So aperture affects the amount of light that comes through your lens. So aperture is the amount of light comes in your lens and makes it through to your camera. So the lower your aperture, so a low aperture is, for example, f2.8. Some lenses go as low as uh, f1.4, f1.2. Uh, so it depends on your lens, but a smaller aperture is going to allow more light in. For example, if you look at this lens here, that's a wide open aperture on this lens. This is from an old film camera that I have, but it's good for demonstration purposes here. So you can see what it looks like and the amount of light that's going to make it through the lens. So there's f1.7 on this lens. Now, as I stop down or go higher on the f-stop with this lens, I'm gonna twist this here. Let's say twist this guy. You can see the blades start to creep in on the inside here, which is gonna reduce the amount of light that comes in through the lens. So the aperture is helping me control the amount of light that's coming into my lens. You can see that little hole getting smaller and smaller. So the other thing that Aperture does, and uh, in addition to controlling the amount of light that comes through your lens and makes it to your image sensor on your camera, the other thing it's doing is depth of field. And that's probably, in my opinion, the most important uh, part of the exposure triangle of trying to figure out what do I want my depth of field to be? You know, what's my vision for the picture I'm trying to take? Do I want a nice, blurry, creamy, smooth background? Or do I want to be able to see from the, the foreground of the picture all the way to the background, nice and crystal clear? So adjusting your f-stop is going to help you do that. So how do I get the blurry background? So the blurry background, you're going to want to make your f-stop the lowest number that you can. Some lenses, it's 3.5. The more expensive lenses, it's 2.8. And some of the, the expen more expensive lenses are also down to 1.4, 1.2. And that's going to give you a nice blurry background. And it's also going to let a lot of light in. So you're going to use a low f-stop for scenarios where a, you want a, a blurry background, or B, you want to allow more light in. You're in a really dark environment, and uh, it's hard for your camera to get the light in. Maybe you've already adjusted your ISO, and you need more light to get into the sensor of your camera so you can get the proper exposure. So you're going to want to lower your aperture or your f-stop, and that's going to allow more light to come in through your uh, lens and get to your image sensor. So I've got a few images that we can take a look at of different apertures. And just so you can see how the lower apertures have a shallower depth of field and how the higher apertures have um, a deeper depth of field. So let's jump on over to Lightroom and check out some images. Here we are in Lightroom and I want to run through a few images that I have at different apertures just so you can see how the depth of field changes as we increase the aperture. So I'm going to start out at aperture of f2.8. So this image here is at f2.8. This is a cool old light meter that I uh, found with a camera that I'd gotten in a garage sale. A really old camera. Pretty cool. So this is f2.8. You can see the light meter is in focus. You can see the plane of, of what's in focus running kind of through that area of the picture. And what's in the foreground is out of focus and what's in the background is out of focus. So I selected an ISO of 100 since I was outside. And I used uh, an f2.8, aperture of f2.8. And the camera chose a shutter speed of 1 over 400, so a 400th of a second. So now I'm going to go up to f3.5. And here it doesn't look too much different, different, but the depth of field is getting a little bit wider. I'm getting a little more area in focus. Now I kept it at ISO 100, and you see the camera adjusted the shutter speed to be 1 2 50th. So again, here I'm changing the aperture and the ISO. So as I increase the aperture, 
means that little hole in the middle is going to get smaller and smaller and let less light in, which means I need to increase my ISO so that the sensor on the camera is more sensitive to the little bit of light that's coming through the lens. Here's f4. You can see more is getting in focus. f5.6, f8, f10, f11, f13. And here you can see that uh, you can tell what the background is, that it's grasses. You can see a little bit of what's going on. You can see the outline of the leaves in the foreground. Um, now I only went up to f13 because you can see here I was at, still at ISO 100 and the camera was at 1 20th of a second. Um, I had the camera stabilized on the ground so I wasn't getting any, any shake in the camera, which is why I was still able to get a clear picture. But um, if you took the f-stop a little bit higher to say f22, then you would see the background even clearer yet. Majority of the time, by the time you get to uh, say f8, everything will be in focus, especially if you're photographing people or landscapes or focusing on anything that's a little farther away. Uh, the light meter here was fairly close to me and I was zoomed in at 70 millimeters. So there you can see different apertures and how more comes into focus as your aperture increases. So how do we practice aperture? So for this next method on how I'm gonna suggest that you practice using your aperture, you're gonna need to know how to adjust your ISO. And we talked about ISO in one of my previous videos, so go back and check that out. I'll put the link uh, in the description below if uh, you're not sure where that is, or I'll put a link up there, and you can click on that and watch that. So you have to know how to adjust your ISO. Because what I'm gonna recommend is that you go to your mode dial here, and on your mode dial, you're gonna wanna go to your aperture priority. Now on Canon cameras, it's AV, and on uh, Nikon and uh, Olympus cameras, for example, it's A. So what aperture priority is gonna do is gonna allow me to select, or you to select the aperture. So what depth of field do you want and how much light do you think you need? And then the camera's gonna select the shutter speed for you. Now in this mode, you're gonna need to select the ISO as well. So you're gonna have to think about what ISO do I think I might need in whatever the environment is that I'm in. For example, if you're outside, pick a low ISO, 100 or 200, and then pick your f-stop, and you should be able to get a, an okay shutter speed that the camera will select and um, be able to get a good exposed image. Now, if it's really bright outside, and say you pick a low aperture, so you pick f2.8 or 3.5, and say you pick a really high ISO, say you selected 3200 for some reason, and say your camera shutter speed can only go up to one four thousandth of a second. Maybe that's not enough uh, shutter speed to give you a proper exposure. So you may need to lower your ISO if you're getting images that don't look right. Or um, you can try adjusting the aperture and see what works. Again, it's a combination of ISO, aperture, and shutter speed that are going to give you a correct exposure. And it just really takes understanding each one individually and then trying to apply them all together as you learn them to see how one affects the other. And that's gonna help you get the best images that you can that are properly exposed. So I hope this helps you out a little bit, understand aperture and how it works, what it does, and how it's important to think about it as you're trying to determine what you want your image to look like and what's your creative vision for the particular image that you're trying to take. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. Check out the rest of my videos, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you enjoy what you're watching and you're learning something, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.